Hey everyone, we're going to do a, um, a session today on how to fund your children's college education. And we're gonna look at a few different scenarios. Really excited about this topic today. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Suja Sham. I'm the CEO and founder of Lux Capital Investment Group. And we're a group that helps everyday investors like me and like you invest in real estate without the headaches or responsibilities of being a landlord. And it's a really awesome way to diversify your portfolio, your investment portfolio, to supercharge your investment portfolio and to build wealth. And really excited to teach people about this because it's just a, such a phenomenal way. And a lot of people don't know how to invest in syndications. And um, that's what we're here to do today is to help people understand the impact that investing in syndications can make on their lives. So um, I'm going to skip ahead to the presentation today. And we're just before we do that, there are several more um, master classes that we have already done so far. So this is number 14, and we've covered a bunch of other topics that are really critical to just understanding the basics of syndication. So now, how to invest confidently for your kid's college fund. Okay, it's an expense that a lot of people know they have to save for and invest for. And, and you know, it's also a changing expense. College, the cost of education is rising much faster than inflation. And we're going to look at that so it's something that really needs to be planned for ever more than it did today. I know that in my case, while my parents did pay for all of our undergraduate education, the college fund that they set up for us didn't really grow to the level that it needed to. So they ended up having to pay for two daughters' private school university education out of their salaries mostly. And that was a painful time, you know? I mean, obviously they did it and they worked very hard and my sister and I didn't have to take on any debt and we're extremely fortunate. And at the same time, that pain, that was still a painful time for my parents writing those big checks every single month, especially for the two years when we were both in college. So let's take a look at the last 20 years of how educational costs have shifted, right? So we're going to look at U.S.-based schools, and we're going to look at private universities and state schools. So over the last 20 years, private university tuition jumped 144%. Out-of-state tuition at state schools jumped 171%, and in-state tuition has jumped 211%. So let's look at that in graph Form. Okay, so um, here we have 2002, and this is the source of this is U.S. News and World Report. So in 2002, private education was 17,000 on average, 938 dollars, and um, and then in by 2022, it was the average is 43,775. Dollars, so that's like a difference of twenty-seven thousand over, like about twenty-five thousand dollars per year. So that is a huge jump. It's a you know, as we said, one hundred and forty-four percent jump. Um, we've got out-of-state um, tuition for state schools jumped from ten thousand four hundred to twenty thousand two hundred thirty-eight. So that is an increase of eighteen thousand dollars per year. And in-state tuition jumped the most on a percentage basis, but the least on a dollar per dollar basis. So 2002, 3,700 to 2022, 11,600. So that is a about a $7,000 um, difference in um, per year tuition. So how does this compare to the consumer price index. Okay, so the consumer price index increased 54% between 2001 and 2021. It's not exactly the same time frame, but it's very close. Whereas private school tuition jumped 144%, 171% for out of state state schools and 211% for in-state tuition. So, um, 
the cost of education is increasing at a pace that's much more rapid than the rest of the cost that we endure for our daily lives. So definitely need to plan for it. And um, this is just another graph showing the same chart. So we're not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, and then let's look at room and board, right? Because room and board has to be factored in too and we haven't factored in that in yet. So the so College Board estimated that in 2019, 2020, so recently, um, the average um, room and board cost for, so I should say room and board cost, um, was 22,000 annually for state schools for tuition, living expenses, and fees entirely. And it was 51,000 annually for private schools. So that includes tuition, living expenses, and fees. So total costs per year, um, 22,000 to 51,000, depending on whether you're going to a state school, um, out of state school, or a private university. So $51,000 if, if your kids, and that's in today's day and age. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next 15 years, okay? So in five years, a four-year state school is projected to cost a total of $113,000 over four years. And in 15 years, a state school is expected to cost $199,000 for four years of education. Let's look at private schools. In five years, so if you have a 13-year-old kid, then if you want to send them to private school, their college is going to cost $259,000 in four years. I mean, four, four years of private school tuition. And if you're going to look at, um, if you want to, if your kid is three years old, so if you have a, a little kid and you want to send them to private school, then you're going to need to save $455,000, perhaps on average, for to send them to private school university. So that's a huge number. You know, $455,000 is way more than what my parents paid for my private school education, which, you know, I graduated in 2006. Um, so huge amounts of money that need to be saved um, if that's what your hope is, is to pay for your kids' assumptions. So um, let's now talk about how to, and, and just so you know, this is based on a 5% increase because that's kind of the, been the average of the increase of university costs. So that's how we projected these costs into the future. Okay, so now let's look at how do you pay for that, right? So we're gonna go to a model that I built. I, I did a previous version of this webinar where I was building the model, but it, it took a little bit too long. So we're going to just start with um, this 10K per year. So the way this model is built is it's saying, okay, if I invest $10,000 per year, um, then how much money will I have in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years. And there's some assumptions that I've factored in here. So number one, we have factored in, this is if you invest in syndications. Okay, so if you invest in syndications, we're projecting a 15% IRR or thereabouts typically. Um, another factor that I, want, that I built in is um, paying 25% capital gains tax every five years. So we're gonna assume that the deals last every five for five years and that every five years, you will have to pay capital gains taxes of 25% and then reinvest that capital. So let's look at year one. So in year one, $10,000 gets put in, okay? Um, it grows in theory to by 15% to 11,500 in year two. And then it grows again by that same amount, by that same factor and again. And then in this yellow one, I have basically taken out 25% of the gains. So, you know, if you see there's not as big of an increase from year four to year five. Then you're gonna reinvest that money, okay? This money, and then it's gonna become, you're gonna multiply that again by the factor of 15% and get this. And then again, when it turns yellow, then we're again taking out 25% on capital gains for taxes since um, the last time the money was, um, the top capital gains taxes were paid. So that, at the end of 15 years, that $10,000 is gonna turn into $34,000. So let's take a look. Like, let's say your kid is 13 years old. So 
If your kid is 13 years old and you start investing $10,000 a year now, and this isn't an exact science, you know, because for example, this $10,000 that you invested in year three, maybe that deal has exited, but maybe not. But of course you don't have to pay all, you don't necessarily have to pay all of your tuition in year one. It can be paid out over the course of several, you know, the years that your kid is in school. So point is, is that in year five, you will have accumulated $65,000, can see it done here, $551,000 in equity. Okay. So what can that pay for? What can that pay for? Let's head back over here, $65,000 in five years. So that could pay for approximately half of a state school tuition, which isn't bad. You know, I mean, that's still something, right. You know, and something to consider. So now what about if you have a eight-year-old and you start investing $10,000 a year, then what will you in syndications and what will you be able to have saved in theory? $182,000. Okay. So what will that get you? $182,000 in 10 years, you will have, you will be able to pay for four years of state school tuition. So that's actually like pretty powerful, you know, to be able to pay for, if you have an eight-year-old kid and all you save is $10,000 a year, then you'll be able to pay for in-state school tuition. I think that's pretty powerful. There's a lot of great state schools out there. If you wanted to send your kid to private school, you could pay for about half of their private school education. Okay. Now, what if you're thinking ahead and you have a three-year-old? Okay. What would you what would you accumulate if you started investing $10,000 a year right now into syndications? You would have $374,000, not bad. Okay, so what can that pay for? Well, in 15 years, you would be able to easily pay for a four-year state school and you would almost, you would be about, um, let's see, it was 374,000, 25, so you'd be about $80,000 short of paying for four-year private school. Now, the cool thing about that is that you may be actually be able to catch some of that up because some of this will still be invested. And so you probably actually would be able to cover, you know, most of your kid's private school education. I think that's extremely powerful. If you invest $10,000 per year starting now and you have a three-year-old, then you could probably pay for one private school education. Okay, so that's if you have $10,000. Uh, I mean, if you have, if you only have $10,000 a year to invest, let's say you have a little bit more per year extra to invest for your kids' ex education. What's that going to look like? So again, we did the same model. So this is like in year, year one, you're investing $25,000 and it's gonna, that's going to turn into this amount by year 15 after we take taxes out. And then in year two, you invest $25,000. That's going to turn into a little bit less. Um, and then so on and so forth. So in five years, say you have a 13 year old and you invest $25,000 a year now, by the end of five years, you'll have approximately $159,000. And what will that pay for? Well, that'll pay for your entire four-year state school education and more. And you'll be about $100,000 short for a private school education, which is not bad. Um, you know, you're getting, you're starting at age 13, putting $25,000 a year away, that's pretty good to be able to pay for most of it. And again, you know, like we said previously, some of that money is going to keep growing. So you probably will get closer to be able to pay for more of that private school education. Okay. What if you, your kid is three years old, I mean, sorry, eight years old, and you've got 10 years and you invest $25,000 a year for 10 years, then you'll have $420,000 at the end of 10 years. So what will that get you? you? You will be able to pay for one private school education plus more. Um, so you have $420,000. So you'll easily be able to pay for one kid's four-year private school education. Um, plus probably some of your other kid, if you have another kid, some of their education too, if they're younger. Okay, now lastly, year 15, start investing. Um, and in 15 years, after investing $25,000, you'll have $878,000. So what will that get you? 15 years, $878,000. Well, that would get you almost two private school educations. In fact, you know, because of timeline differences, if your oldest kid is, is um, three years old and you have another kid that's younger, 
then you'll prop and you put away $25,000 a year, just one set of $25,000 a year, not one per kid. Then by the time your kid is 18, you'll be able to pay for two private school educations. That is so powerful and so cool. And something that, you know, it's, it's hard to necessarily imagine because $25,000 is a lot, right? It's a lot to put away, but depending on what kind of income bracket you're in, maybe that's totally doable. And then you won't have to think about um, college education coming out of your paycheck when your kids are 18. Okay. And now what if you are in an even higher income bracket, maybe you got an inheritance or whatnot, what could you do? Or your kids are like, you know, 13 and you want to supercharge it. Okay. So if you're, you're trying to supercharge it, your kid's 13 and you put $50,000 a year in a way, then that's going to equal $327,000 in five years. And that's going to equal enough for a private school education plus some to, you know, get another kid's education started. So that that's $327,000. You're going to be able to pay for at least one four-year private school. Okay. What about if your kid's eight years old, then you'll make $913,000. So if your oldest kid is eight years old and you start putting away $50,000 a year, then you will be able to pay for, you know, that equals 913. You'll be able to pay for two, um, easily pay for two four-year private school educations plus some more. And lastly, if your kid is, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even finish this model because, um, it was so powerful. So in your fifth, if you, you know, I didn't, it would go down here. Um, and I'll have to finish that, but <laughs> not, let's say you stopped investing $50,000 in 10 at year 10, and you just kept letting a lot of it grow. You just kept letting it grow. Then this is what would happen. You would have $1.859 million and that would pay for at least three and a half kids, private school education. So pretty powerful, right? Like, I mean, you start investing now $50,000 a year, and then you stop in year 10 and year 15, your kids are going to school and you've got three private school educations paid for. So I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool way to model just the power of it. Um, I built this model just like, it's not really a complicated model. It's just a model that I built to um, look at, you know, what if, okay. So um, I hope that was helpful. And um if you want the model and to play with it yourself, please let me know. I'd be happy to send it for you. And again, my name is Suja. I'm with the Lux Capital um, Investment Group. And my podcast is Passive Income Unlocked. And really happy to share with you um, today about how I like to think about you know, saving, right? And then this could be applied not just for college, but for anything like your retirement, um, how much income that you want to have per year, you can start modeling this out and um, trying to compare, right? So for example, the average returns of the stock market is like, you know, somewhere between eight and 10%. Whereas with real estate, we have more control, 15%. So you can build out models that are comparing 10% versus 15%. Um, you know, there's some things that are harder to model like tax benefits, et cetera. But if you start, this is what's so powerful about the numbers. If you start actually playing with the numbers and building out models, then you start realizing the power of investing. And then you start getting motivated. And then you start seeing the vision, like, oh my gosh, like I could pay for my kid's education, like a private school education, if I just put away $10,000 a year. Is that right? Um, let me just check, double check that. $10,000 a year, you're 15. You could almost pay for one private school education in 15 years. I think that's really powerful. So thank you so much, folks, for tuning in to this um, uh, webinar. Really great to see you. And we'll see you next time.